University to find out. So, Tarek, explain to me about pesticides. OK, Steph, pesticides are chemicals uh, which control organisms, which are undesirable organisms. They could be weeds. Most of us think of pesticides controlling insects, insect pests of crops. Uh, but they could also be diseases of crops as well. And so what are you doing here? Well, we're trying to develop alternatives to the conventional chemical pesticides. We're trying to exploit natural organisms uh, which occur, you know, in the soil and in our environment. So what we're trying to do is to try and develop these organisms as alternatives to the chemical pesticides. This is where they keep all the pests. Let's take a look. Here, for example, we have uh, weevils, and there's a whole range of weevils. Mm -hmm. These can actually de devastate a whole range of uh, forest trees. They've got powerful mouth parts which actually chew away and remove the bark. Uh, particularly young saplings can be starved, it can be stunted, and it can actually topple over, and basically it's killed. At the university, they're developing naturally occurring fungi that have evolved to attack and kill specific bugs. One such fungus, called metarhizium, is proving to be a potent biological alternative to harmful chemicals. So, Minshad, what are you preparing here? Oh, I'm, uh, this is the fungus, and I'm going to prepare a, a, a test. It's called the LC50, lethal concentration, to kill the 50% of insects. Mm. So Minshad fungus, uh, is doing a vital test to see how effective the fungus is at killing pests. These aren't actually the target pests. They're little larvae called galeria, and they're usually chosen to make sure it's a fair test. Can what? I pick this uh, up? Yeah, and uh, they, they, are, they are quite friendly. And uh, this is a, you, used as a model host uh, in worldwide. Yeah. First, Minshad takes the fungus here in this Petri dish and makes up a concentrated solution. The preparation has to be done in sterile conditions. He needs to know how many spores there are per milliliter. Believe it or not, he counts them. He takes a tiny drop and looks down the microscope. He counts the spores in the larger square. Then another square. He does this five times and takes an average, in this case, 40. As there are 25 squares, this means that there are 25 times 40 spores, or 1,000 in the sample. Since he knows the volume of the sample, he can calculate the concentration. It's 10 to the 8 spores per milliliter. So the final concentration will be 1 time 10 to the power 8 quinidia per ml. So from this, I'm going to make a dilution. Now he prepares what's called a serial dilution. He takes 1 milliliter of the concentrated solution and adds it to 9 milliliters of the wetting agent in the second tube. This makes the second tube ten times less concentrated. Minshad repeats the process from one tube to the next. You can see from the labels on the tubes that the serial dilution gives you lower and lower concentrations, each ten times less. The last tube is the control with no spores. In the LC50 test, they want to know which of these concentrations will kill 50% of the bugs. The fungus works by piercing the outer casing and infecting the bug. The fungus grows and develops spores so that it can spread to other bugs. Because the fungus is naturally occurring, birds and other creatures that feed on these bugs are unharmed, even if they do fancy a nibble at something distinctly unappetizing. And here are the bugs in the LC50 test. It's day eight. So let's see what's happened. This looks pretty gruesome. What's going on here? This is the LC50 uh, test, where I'm testing the uh, different concentration. To see he the, counts uh, how many have much. died and fills in the table for day eight. The LC50 test results are that between 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 7 spores are needed to kill 50% of the bugs. A computer program allows Minshad to calculate the exact concentration. Now, it takes 2.3 million spores to kill half of the insects. That's a vast amount of spores. Well, it, it, it just just looking vast amount of a spore, but in natural condition, you can find the same number in, the, uh, in any way. So where are we going? But where do you collect the fungi? In deepest Africa? 
The Amazon rainforest? No. This parkland is part of the university campus, and lurking in the soil could be a new fungus strain. And uh, this is a without treated area, and we are hoping to find a, a, a biocontrol agent, such as the nematode or fungi. Uh, so, so, so we're looking to find some fungi? Yeah, yeah, we are looking to find a fungi. Earthworms are a sign of the rich biodiversity of untreated soil. That's why Minshad chooses this location to search for promising new fungi for the development of biological pesticides. It's only because of the huge biodiversity of the planet that we can find something as amazing as a fungus that can help us combat pests.